Welcome back to a special edition of The Dish for a couple reasons. Number one, we're actually live together at HRN HQ. Sarah Albadwe is actually going to be on Talking Horses Friday, no longer an HRN employee, but Paddock Prince, well represented on the picks page, representative here live in person. And we have a huge pick five carryover to go after Thursday. Yeah, no better way to bring my maiden in the studio with <laughs> hey rare late pick five carryover from um, Naira and most tracks to boot. Right. Yeah. It's a uh, big pools there. So you do figure most of the combinations are going to be covered. And I was not watching on Sunday, but you let me know what led to the carryover. And yeah. Now you're going to let everyone else know. Ricardo Legat, I don't pronounce his name wrong, but he, um, I think he had two winners all of last year. He had two winners on Sunday, including a big long shot in the last race that produced a rare carryover in the pick five. All right, uh, your full card selections, including the three races not covered by the late pick five, but are in the early pick five, will be available at HRN. So we're not going to go through the whole sequence because we want people to avail themselves to the great information you've put forth in your sheet. But I do think the question on everyone's mind, and I had this question before I even looked at the PPs, and now I really have this question, what the heck do you do with that first leg? Yeah, they, they did not make it easy on us in the first leg. There's a lot going on in this race. Not much form going on, but there's <laughs> drop downs, horses. There's off, form. Rare form, a little <laughs> form, just a little, but a lot of drop downs, a lot of off the layoffs. I mean, everything is going on. I think in this sequence, race, you would really want to spread in. I don't know if people like the single, not single, but I would definitely not lean on anybody in this race. The 10 horses, one horse that'll probably go off as a post time favorite, second in read. He is dropping down in class. He showed a, a little bit compared to the others <laughs> to be nice. Um, yeah, I know there's a lot going on in this race, a lot of options. I will say in this type of race, uh, and I'm, uh, we will definitely want to get to the first time starter because there's an HRN angle there. But absent that, Maiden Claimer, one turn mile, I am automatically, no matter what, unless I think it's going to be an overbet favorite for other reasons, going to use a horse who has shown some ability to get to the front. And that's number seven, Excalibrate, uh, E6 on Bristnet. I know you use DRF, uh, but all you need to see is this horse has actually made the lead. And I don't believe there's any other horse in the field who even has a one in their running lines. And in this type of race, that's an automatic use for me. So the seven is going to be an A on my my uh, grid. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, especially in these cheap claiming races. Maiden speed can go a long way. I thought the two was a little interesting. Drama Land. He um he has not run since October of last year or not last year now I guess. Cost three hundred thousand. He showed nothing. <laughs> Bumped break, but it wasn't that bad. But he faced way better horses in that race. So I'm going to give him a second chance on the trainer trainer switch to Bruce Levine. He's a gelding. He's getting Lasix. He's dropping in class, so he's getting a lot of changes. And in these type of races, I think um, horses like that or horses are horses or must uses. Yeah, kitchen sink treatment there for mm -hmm. sure. And then I will mention the first time starter, another 12 to 1 on the morning line as is as Excalibur. But Danny's a cowboy. And I know you told me, Michelle Nevin, the numbers aren't great, admittedly, 4% debut maiden claiming. Uh, she's not a first time trainer, especially in, I think, these types of venues. But Horse Racing Nation does have the debut power ratings. This horse got a four. And going back to December 26th of 2021, so basically looking at a whole season at Aqueduct, the four-star horses on the power ratings report, positive ROI. So in this type of race, I'm just not going to get beat by a horse like that with a favorable rating for the place that signs my paychecks. Yeah, and I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna talk anybody off any horse in this race. I think one other horse to mention is the six horse basic truth. He ran in a 30 main claimer, little bump at the, um, at the break. He's getting the bug boy a new, a new bug boy back on. So Patrick Reynolds is obviously a capable trainer. I think in this race I would also use the six basic truth and spread his deep as you can and it is nice that this is the first race so you'll be able to see if you know like your first time starter um the eight horse danny a cowboys taking any money so it is nice that you'll be able to see the board before the pick five starts yeah and, and i think this is the type of race where if anyone for whatever reason is taking silly money mm -hmm. the impulse of course is oh that you know that they must know something i gotta use this horse but if it's a 10 horse field this group I would almost just say, uh, and, you know, maybe that's a trainer calling us now. Sorry about that. <laughs> but I would almost say, 
I would want to beat any horse who's less than two to one in this field. And that, I don't, on paper, no horse will be less than two to one, but we do see it. These maiden claimers, uh, you know, horse like Meta, Metamorphosis, Drumaland, Basic Truth, any of them I could see taking money. That would change my opinion to want to beat them even more. Yeah, the horse I'm going to watch the board on is Drumaland because of the big drop and the gelding and the Lasix and the trainer switch. So we'll see what happens with that horse. All right. Uh, the other race uh, we mentioned wanting to talk about is the seventh, which uh, is the feature $88,000 purse. That is some good money for the winner in New York, good money anywhere. Uh, I saw this one is a little easier, so to speak, a two horse race. Unfortunately, it's between the two logicals. Five to two on the inside, two to one on the outside. Uh, my plan when I'm in that situation is like a race like the first leg, which we see is open, is be willing to let the short prices beat me. I'm probably not going to stretch in this race to try to get past the obvious. No, I agree with you. I like peace in my heart in this race, the seven, uh, seven horse. If I was going to key a horse in this sequence, it would be her. She lost to her stable mate in the last race of Fouette. But if you go back and watch that race, it was a three horse race. She was the lone speed. So there wasn't real pace in that race or peace in my heart to close into. She drew well in here. If you go through her PPs, four back, she lost a good night. Olive, who we all know, won the Breeders' Cup, Philly and Mare Sprint. Time before that, next start, she lost to Betsy Blue, who's a multiple stakes winner and won, I think, five or six races um, last year. And then self-isolation is also a stakes horse. So I think she's coming out of some really live races. She got wired by her stable mate last time out, but there looks to be some other pace in this race to set up for, so her stable mate will not get loose. And uh, in terms of the pretty close morning line, and I think they will be when the off, go off betting goes off, Another feather and piece of my heart's cap, the outside post in this instance, I really have no explanation for it because there's plenty of run to the turn going seven at Aqueduct. Mm -hmm. uh, the rail is over its last seven at this trip, granted small sample size, but over the last 32 races, uh, which dates back to November at this distance, the rail is still just 7% and a negative 50% uh, impact value. So uh, they were expected to win many more races than that and did not. So uh, definitely the outside has been better at this trip and at similar prices, if you're looking for a KG lean, piece of my heart could be it. Yeah, and the Linda Rice bar in the last month has been absolutely on fire. Right. Yeah, she's claimed horses from church on bottom hmm. up and run well, and then she's done well with her straight. Which Gary Palmasano hates. I know, well, she did really bad with it last year. And then this year she's claimed, went back and did the same thing in the fall and her horses are um, performed much better this year at this meet. All right. Now, are you actually going to have a ticket in the sheet? I will have a ticket in the and sheet. And what's your approach with that? Because, you know, as you and I have both yeah. done this in various, various degrees. I always just try to stick to sort of the, the one ticket for things like that. I mean, no one buying a sheet or listening to mm -hmm. us wants to put in 20 tickets. Yeah. Um, that's an extreme example, but mm -hmm. I'm sort of a one ticket guy too when it comes to things like that. Now, do you see it as a foundation if people want to add or subtract? They will. Uh, do you play it exactly or do you add yourself? What sort of your approach to, okay, this is my public ticket? Yeah, when I put it on the sheet, that's exactly what I play. I try to I try to single for the most part. I'm not really a two-ticket guy. But mainly, unless I really have some real strong opinions, I might put, put on there like a you know like real hard A ticket. But for the most part, I'm really a guy that tries to find a single. And actually, in this sequence on the sheet, you'll see I did not single anybody, but I'm I use two horses and three legs, so I'm going to play it to that approach. But, yeah, it is, the first leg and the last leg of the sequence look like the toughest ones, and the ones in the middle look like example piece of my heart in the second to last race. Look like horses you can somewhat lean on. Yeah, going into the last, and we won't handicap it, but that's definitely one where, you know, you, you realistically could say, man, I actually have a shot with this 20 to 1. Not that it's the most likely winner, but, you know, there are some races where – you feel like you're wasting combos trying to get lucky with the all button, but yeah, the last, last race, race is a, is a skull bus. Yeah. We won't talk about it, but try it again. I think it's a <laughs> seven to two morning line favorite hasn't ran since 2021 and she's seven to two on the yeah, morning line. That, so you talk should, about getting to see the board in the first leg. That would be one. It'd be nice to, to, to see it too, but yeah, the first and the last part of the leg, challenge. Yeah. They look real similar. look like you can really spread in those races and then try to get a price and, Try to lean on some of your strong plays in the middle legs. All right. What are you going to do if you scoop the pool? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I would assume the pool is going to be over a million dollars plus because it's a Thursday. There's 
not a lot going on. It actually looks especially bad. if Parks chalks out today, then that'll just be money people turn into tomorrow. So one hundred percent. I um yeah, I mean the pool is going to be huge. It does, it could in the middle have some short price horses, but I think there's a chance for two or three ten to one plus winners. Yeah, I, I have to think one of these is going to allow you to separate a little bit. And obviously, if the rest is logical, it's not still not going to be huge, but there's opportunity and. Unlike the pick six, the takeout remains 15%. So this is a tremendous wagering opportunity. You and I obviously are going to jump on in. It starts in race four. Uh, it's an eight race card, race one, full card selections with the paddock prints, pick five strategy, races four through eight. Good luck.